Granbull is one of those fully evolved Pokemon that is less well known than its pre-evolution. Because who could forget Snubble's crew in Pikachu's vacation? Of course, Granbull is pretty great in its own right. It's got a lot of personality for a normal type, at least in generations 2 through 5. And though it may seem strange for a Bulldog to be a fairy type, as Granbull became one in generation 6 and onwards, it actually refers to the Kusith, a creature from Celtic mythology, whose name literally means dog fairy. Today, we'll be examining if Granbull's intimidating fangs bit down on the competitive scene, or if it was too timid to do so, as its Pokedex entries would suggest. And so, we ask, how good was Grand Bull actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. GSC Grand Bull stood no chance in the Snorlax-dominated OU metagame, but down in UU, it was one of the best Pokemon in the metagame. With its bread and butter Curse Talk set, it was one of the most consistent answers to the single best Pokemon in the tier, Needle Queen, as Grand Bull absorbed lovely kisses. Incidentally, this is why it did not use Heal Bell, which would actually make it more difficult for it to handle Needle Queen. Anyway, Grand Bull shrugged off Needle Queen's attacks while posing an immense threat in its own right. The tier did not exactly possess an abundance of normal resist, and even unboosted returns hit neutral targets incredibly hard, especially in conjunction with spikes. Spikes also helped wear down the few normal resists in the tier, and as if that wasn't enough, Granbull also made an excellent pairing with Pursuit Electabuzz, who chased out and heavily damaged the likes of Haunter, Kabutops, and Amistar. Granbull sometimes even ran HP ground to get the job done against these Pokemon itself, while also completely destroying Magneton, its would-be best counter for its resistance to Buzz's Pursuit, and maintaining effective sleep talks against Nidoqueen. Of course, Hidden Power Ground came with the downside of severely cutting into Grand Bull's bulk as a result of the Force DV drop, and in conjunction with a lack of curse, made it less able to break bulkier Pokemon that suddenly became apt checks, namely Slowbro and Blastoise. However, it was an excellent option nonetheless, as it made Grand Bull even more of a threat against offensive teams. Grand Bull's main downside was its low special defense, which was often preyed on by powerful special attackers such as Mr. Mime, Kadabra, and the aforementioned Electabuzz. However, part of what made Grand Bull so effective in spite of the promise of these special attackers was the fact that they were mortally afraid of Grand Bull's return. They certainly didn't want to switch into that attack. The few Pokemon that did want to switch into return were all exploitable in one way or another. Many of them lacked recovery, were vulnerable to getting chipped by Pursuit, or slammed by Hidden Power Ground, and tended to be easy to switch into in return. Thus, Grand Bull remained threatening even in the face of these checks, as it was often able to outlast them. Paralysis support, which wasn't hard to come by with all the Thunders, Thunder Waves, and Stun Spore in the tier, also made Grand Bull even scarier allowing it to overcome its poor speed stat. Overall, for its ability to reliably answer Needle Queen in a metagame dominated by it, as well as threatening a huge portion of the tier, Grand Bull was one of the best Pokemon in the tier, right up there with Needle Queen herself. Generation 3 was essentially a repeat for Granbull. It couldn't keep up at all in OU, but was quite good in UU. Granbull had gained several excellent traits in the generational shift, an incredible ability in Intimidate, coverage in Earthquake and Focus Punch, and potential power upgrades, both with Double Edge as Normal Stab and the all-around strength of Choice Band. Additionally, as it was no longer tasked with handling Lovely Kiss Needle Queen, it could now freely run Heal Bell. It did have the toughest competition a normal type could have, though, as Gen 3 UU was unequivocally reigned over by Kangaskhan. However, Grand Bull was effective enough that it found its way onto teams regardless. In fact, one of its most valuable traits was using Intimidate to help stave off Kangaskhan, while being able to make progress for his team in some form. Whether it was firing off its own powerful attacks, spreading paralysis with Thunder Wave, or curing its own team's status with Heal Bell, Choice Band was fearsome and hit much harder than Kangaskhan. It was one of the most powerful Pokemon in the tier. However, scary as that variant was, Grand Bull most commonly ran Heal Bell sets, as Cleric Support was an invaluable tool against UU's Toxic Spam. Rest Talk sets had great longevity and could wake themselves up prematurely with Sleep Talk Heal Bell, which also had the benefit of not burning up Heal Bell PP. This was great since 8 Heal Bells could burn up quickly in longer games. Sleep Talk could even call Heal Bell once Heal Bell's PP had run out. This set was excellent on stall teams, whose slower pace meant they could better deal with the free switch ins Grand Bull afforded many Pokemon, for example, an Amistar looking to spike. Offensive teams did not have the luxury of running Rest Talk Grand Bull, but they could still reap the benefits of its Heal Bell. Its offensive Beller set did not have Rest Talk's longevity or ability to use more than 8 Heal Bells, but neither of these were necessary on more aggressive teams that took games at a faster pace. Being able to rid a team member of a debilitating paralysis, poison, or sleep just once or twice was excellent in enabling aggressive play to break walls almost without consequence from Grand Bull's offensive teammates. Its ability to stave off the monstrously dangerous Kangaskhan was also terrific, given how difficult Kangaskhan was to counter for teams comprised of frailer offensive Pokemon. Best of all, with some offensive investment and increased coverage 
coverage options, Granbull was able to threaten opposing Pokemon as well, which wasn't the case for other Kangaskhan checks such as Cradilly. Omastar wouldn't be able to freely come in on offensive Granbull to lay down spikes, lest it get hit hard by Earthquake, and make itself more vulnerable to Granbull's teammates like Scyther. Incidentally, the likes of Scyther was another reason why Granbull's Intimidate was so massively useful. Its primary use was the ever-present Kangaskhan, but there were plenty other physical attackers Granbull was helpful in pivoting around without necessarily hard countering, such as Needle King, Fero, Agron, and Feraligator. It wasn't useful against every physical attacker, and it didn't want to switch into fighting types, and it couldn't slow down Gligar or Pinsir thanks to Hypercutter, but Granbull still managed to put in plenty of work on a game-to-game -game basis. Handling Kangaskhan alone was a huge deal. Of course, Granbull had other flaws. Its low speed and special defense were more exploitable than ever with Generation 3's new split EV system. However, it was a give and take, as the addition of positive natures also let Granbull hit harder or defend better, depending on the set. Overall, Granbull once again had a solid niche in Yuyu, providing important support while posing a threat in its own right. Granbull did not take kindly to the fourth generation's massive power creep. It couldn't keep up with all the life orbs and choice specs and close combats and focus blasts. It received close combat itself, but so did another brutally powerful normal type, Ursaring, which made Granbull completely obsolete in Yuyu. Not even attempts at support sets could salvage any semblance of a niche for it. Sadly, there was almost no justification for using Granbull in Enyu either. Its low speed, poor special defense, and fighting weakness were incredibly exploitable by nearly the entire metagame, making it nearly impossible possible for it to accomplish anything meaningful on either offense or defense. Defensively, it was outdone by Licky Licky, whose huge special defense was more suited to the NU environment, and who provided excellent utility in Wish. Granbull could, on rare occasion, run a decent choice band set. Its huge attack and Reggie Rock wrecking close combat were the envy of Tauros and Dodrio. However, in spite of this, the latter two saw consistent use because they were much faster, and thus matched up much better against the metagame. Tauros even had Intimidate. Sadly, Granbull didn't really have much of a place in Gen 4 Yuyu. It could be fun to use, but doing so certainly wasn't a competitively minded choice. We've heard this story before. Black and White was no generation for old normal types. They received no buffs, their lack of resist meant they couldn't switch in anywhere, they certainly could not keep up with the monstrous fighting types around every corner, and they didn't pose any sort of offensive threats. NU was the one vestige of refuge for normal types in Gen 5. Tauros, Kangaskhan, Zangoose, and Swellow were all top tier offensive threats. However, the point the massively power crept 5th generation constantly hammered home was that if you weren't top tier, you were nothing. As such, Grand Bull was nothing. It offered nothing on the defensive side, and its low speed hindered it from achieving anything offensively. Plus, it didn't even have its power going for it anymore. Zangus could easily match Granbull's power, and then some, while actually being fast, and Ursaring was present in the tier as well. Heobo just wasn't enough to make Granbull at all worthwhile in Gen 5. It would still just be dead weight, losing one-on-one -on -one to nearly the entire metagame. As such, it unceremoniously dropped to untiered. Granbull got a complete overhaul in Generation 6. No longer would it be plagued by the hindrances of its resistance lacking normal typing. It was now a fully fledged fairy type. For the first time, Granbull actually had more than a sparsely used ghost immunity going for it. It now resisted bug, dark, and even its previous scourge, fighting, as well as being immune to dragon. Its overall stats were still unimpressive and there was plenty of fairy type competition, so it wasn't going to be breaking into OU or even UU anytime soon. But the power of fairy typing was such that it allowed Granbull to make full use of Intimidate and Heal Bell so well that it wasn't relegated to Enyu, as it might have hoped for before. It actually moved up, landing itself a solid niche in Aryu. It wasn't for lack of competition either. Deancey was one of the tier's most popular Pokemon, and it too was a Heal Bell using Fairy type, while also providing further support with Stealth Rock. However, Granbull was far from outclassed. Deancey's part rock typing meant it did not resist fighting like Granbull did. This fighting resistance, as well as Intimidate, meant Granbull could fend off some of the most terrifying physical attackers in the tier, like Sock, Scrafty, and Verizion, whose Leaf Blade Granbull was also neutral to, as opposed to Deancey's weakness. Granbull was also able to help stave off other fighting types such as Medicham, Hitmonlee, and Boar and Girder, as well as non-fighters like Aerodactyl and Sneasel, meaning it pulled its weight on a game-to-game -game basis. Additionally, Heal Bell was consistently useful in the status-heavy RU metagame, for its ability to reinforce offensive and defensive teammates alike. For example, it could remove a crippling toxic from Alomomola, and in return, Alomomola would keep Granbull healthy 
healthy by passing its huge wishes, making up for Granbull's lack of recovery beyond leftovers. The Granbull Aloma Mola Corps was a staple of many teams, as Granbull was an integral component of many teams' defensive cores, and keeping it healthy was incredibly important. As it being the sturdiest answer to the two scariest Pokemon in the tier, Scrafty and Virizion, was an invaluable trait. Granbull was a great Pokemon and key part of the Oraz RU metagame, consistently combining crucial defensive utility and team support. Generation 7 brought both Power Creep and the influx of Fairy types, which sent Granbull flying out of Aryu, tumbling past Anu, and thudding into PU. Sadly, even there it was unable to find a niche. Previously, it had excelled as a fighting type counter, but now one of PU's most prominent pugilists was Primate, whose defiant ability meant that Granbull's Intimidate would actually power it up. Sure, Granbull could still check Girder and Hitmonchan, but it would get worn down way too quickly. It no longer had an Alomomola to receive wishes from. The closest it had to recovery was Z Heal Bell, which was almost always a waste of a team Z Crystal. Heal Bell wasn't nearly useful enough to justify Granbull's use, as it didn't check much else of note either. This stood in stark contrast to the tier's premier fairy types, Clefairy and Savali Fairy. They both had superior utility move pulls and overall defensive stat spreads, making them far better as support Pokemon and answers to threats alike. There really was just about no reason to use Granbull in a series match, thus nobody did, and Granbull racked up its second untiered placement. And that's it, so how good was Granbull actually? Well, its first two generations saw it act as an excellent UU Pokemon, whose primary purpose was reliably fending off the most dangerous threat in the tier, Nidoqueen, and Kangaskhan respectively. It was quite a threat in its own right too. Then Generation 4 came around and receiving close combat wasn't enough to save Granbull from its fate, of itself being demolished by close combat. Generation 5's power creep was even harsher, completely removing any semblance of viability for Granbull and knocking it into untiered. However, the sixth generation brought Granbull back to life. Its brand new fairy typing allowed it to move up in rank. It once again fulfilled one of the most important defensive roles in the tier, saving off terrifying fighting types, most notably the metagame crushing Scrafty and Virizion. Sadly, it was followed up by another generation of power creep. Sun and Moon never gave it any chance, even all the way down in PU, and thus Granbo was untiered once again. However, it has had quite a solid track record overall. In three of its six generations, it has been quite excellent in its respective tier. While most Pokemon cowered in fear of a metagame's top threats, Granbull shut them down. Hopefully it gets a little more in the way of move pull and stat buffs in the future, and we get to see Granbull in action again. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments I want to know what do you think about competitive Granbull, how would you buff it because it probably really needs it, whatever it is let me know in the comments. Also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.